Coming to you from UBN Studios in Burbank, California. You're listening to the Unsugarcoated Podcast with your host, Ali Alanius. Hello, and welcome to another episode of your favorite social good podcast. I am here to bring you an amazing, incredible conversation on guess what? NFTs. I know. What the heck is NFTs? Well, we're going to find out about it today. But listen, I, on the subject matter, uh, there's a reason why we're having it. And I really want to start off by saying, why should people not dismiss the power of cryptocurrency? People are scared of it. And I'm not even going to pretend that I actually understand all the ins and outs of it. So in this particular conversation today, guys, know that I am the one who doesn't have the answers. And that's why we brought some people to have them. Um, as an old school person, I'm familiar with wanting something tangible I you know it reminds me but actually this whole cryptocurrency reminds me of a time in my life when I was a, uh, an advisor for the California Medical Review Board and I was part of a project called the doctor's office quality initiative our job was to uh, 20 years ago was to really lead the way for doctors to become involved in electronic medical records the reason was for a better continuity of care for better access and so many people were resistant to it I cannot begin to tell you how many medical assistants I would have in an office going live with a project and they would start breaking down in tears because they were so used to holding on to the paper. But what does this mean? Like, how does this affect us? And more importantly, how can it empower us? That is why I want to have this conversation today. So, and with that, I have a very special co-host. I cannot wait to, to introduce him to you. He is definitely a treat. So with that, let me intro my co-host. Joseph Lanius is a major motion picture executive producer, film finance and entertainment business strategist and entertainment attorney. In my opinion, one of the best, but I will agree that I could be a slightly biased. He has brought over 100 films to the big and small screen, and some of his recent credits include the upcoming film Card Counter, which has names attached such as Martin Scorsese, Tiffany Haddish, Ty Sheridan, and Oscar Isaac. The, the Vanished, starring Thomas Jane and Anne Hesch, which was recently number two on Netflix. The Inheritance with Lily Collins and Simon Pegg, which premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival in 2020. And Netflix, To the Bone, starring Keanu Reeves and Lily Collins. These are just a few, and if you stay connected to him, you can keep up with all the films that he is currently working on. He has traveled the world to understand it as a better for cultures and markets that his films are created in and audience they are produced for. Though all of these things are really cool, he is also a husband and father and here to join me today, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my husband, Mr. Joseph Lanius. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. This is the first time. This is the first, first time. <laughs> so, but you've ever even been to the studio. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, well, but thank you for having me, of course. Thank you, sir. So a lot of people ask me what you do in film. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let you give your version really quick before we introduce our other guest, amazing guest. And then I'm just going to have to chime in a little bit maybe on my perspective because I do feel that you always downplay all the incredible work you do. So, Mr. Lanius, <laughs> what do you she do? She is my biggest cheerleader, no doubt. And I always appreciate that. But um, I am first and foremost, what I do is I'm an entertainment attorney in the film industry. And what that kind of, what I really focus and specialize on is independent filmmaking. Um, I help structure the financing for films and um, a lot of films are financed through debt components and that will involve uh, bank lending and institutional lending as well as um, equity financing um, and then you also have what you call tax incentives and that depends on where you shoot your film and I help uh, producers and production companies and um, people that are trying to get projects off the ground and bring them together uh, from both a uh, financing perspective a business perspective and just and legal uh, kind of doing everything from top to bottom that comprises around a film from development production all the way out to distribution so and lots in between um, yeah that, that lots that's in between main. I'm very familiar with it ladies and gentlemen <laughs> I hear it I, I really say you know because he, you deal with a lot of the unions you fight for your your clients you fight for their creative uh ownership you give advice on all of these things which is why you're part of the conversation today because when we're talking about this new concept nfts cryptocurrency related to creatives film music art 
uh, that's it's it's a changing environment, and I think that in order to be ahead of the game, you have to know what's going on, right? Yeah, it's very exciting for me. I mean, any time that you can, you know, be because right now a lot of it, even from a legal perspective, there's a lot of gray area in NFTs, and it's kind of cool to be just like these artists are on the forefront of taking control of of their ip and and being able to use that and get it out there to the world in such a new format um is very cool and is, you know and shaping some of the being a part of some of the conversations about okay how do you do this and because you know at the end of the day all this creative there is still a business behind it and especially you know for younger artists coming in that don't know how you protect yourself in this in this area um because you got to be careful in in all forms of when you are a creative you know there are people who want to help you but then there's also those people who want to take advantage of you yeah um, yep, for sure so. all right well awesome so i'm so happy to have you here i can't wait uh and so I want to get to my second guest, who is actually one of my faves. He's a huge supporter of Unsugarcoated Media. So let's definitely invite him to the conversation. Ali Sabet is an Iranian-American, internationally known contemporary artist, brand strategist, designer, and creator of Pixopop. His art speaks to healing, and he has collaborated with some of the most incredible brands in the world, such as Mont Blanc, BMW, Furla, John Varvatos, and Tesla, just to name a few. He is the number two highest-selling artist on known origin, and in relation to our conversations today about NFTs, he has sold over 300 NFTs since February 15th, 2021. As the founder of Sebet Brands, he specializes in branding, naming, brand strategy, and positioning. He is a huge friend to me and an amazing supporter of Unsugar Code Media. This is his second time he has been on the podcast. You can go to episode 23 to check out so much more information about him. But to help us talk about the newest hot topics in the art world, NFTs, the crypto-based digital scarcity solution that's taking the art and entertainment world by storm. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Mr. Ali Sabet. <laughs> Hello, Ali. How are you, my dear? Hi, Ali. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Good to Tell see you. Tell me. So, first of all, before we actually get into the NFTs, you know, I want to, okay. again, thank you for coming back. And I really do encourage the audience to go and learn more about, like, the history of Pixopop and, and all of that. And we're really happy to have this update with you. But I would love for you to just start off and simply talk about, you know, you have an incredible passion for art. Sure. What stirs that? within you oh my god <clears throat> excuse me i don't know where that where that came from but i i mean i i can't help but have to paint and draw every day as much as i can and there are times that uh, i think the energy of wanting to share it is more uh, powerful than it is to paint so i i go in between those two worlds and then at the same time there's this part of me that constantly wants to uh, engage with other artists and help them push them into new frontiers like the NFT world, like when I was doing Instagram and trying to sell work on Instagram and Facebook and everywhere else. Uh, I'm still doing that the same thing right now in the NFT world. So I think it's about connection. It's about sharing and it's about uh, bringing that energy down from wherever it comes from. So. Uh, sorry, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty That's okay. here. So sorry. I don't. Okay. So are we live, by the way? We are not. We are pre-recorded, okay, okay. so we will edit out any issues because I don't know if that sound just came through on the podcast or not. And I know I was complaining. I couldn't hear you on the headphones. So, mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> okay. So sorry. So, I mean, just kind of picking back up towards the end of what you were saying, um, how it, you know, we talked earlier this year, or in 2020, rather, and right. we talked about the challenges that were being brought, and then NFTs kind of came along, and since you are definitely our expert in the room, can you start off with just, <laughs> just a- That's not saying much. <laughs> can you start off with, for, for, for someone like me, the person who really is still trying to grasp the concept, sure. what is a non-fungible token? I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I 
mean, uh, that you can admit it a little bit, but you are, you have been successful in selling some. So, so, you have so I, I mean, on the basics of what I understand it is that basically by taking an image or a video or whatever it is and putting it on the blockchain through a smart contract that comes with uh, being able to what's called minting it or uploading it through the blockchain. Uh, what happens is that this smart contract that says, this is mine, I created it, there's only one of it, or there's 10 of it, or there's 25 of it, you know, talking about additions, and then uh, putting it on the blockchain for people to be able to buy, sell, or trade, or gift sometimes. Uh, so when that piece goes from one hand to the next, it, it's taken out of my wallet or out of my pocket, and it's put into somebody else's pocket. Now you can't do that. If I send you a JPEG of it, it's just a copy of a copy of a copy, right? Uh, whereas this JPEG is actually attached to a certificate of authenticity. It's like me sending you a print that has my signature on it and I've written something on the back of it and I've personalized it to you versus if you downloaded it and printed it yourself. I, I think that's probably one of the easiest ways I can explain it. Uh, so there's value in the one that has my signature and you know that it's authenticated by me, the artist, or by a state of an artist versus, again, grabbing a screenshot, right? Which is what people say, oh, why are you spending $50,000 on that NFT when I just took a screenshot and I have, I own it or I right clicked and saved, right? So those are the, that's the different thing. And then that creates value. So a non-fungible token, uh, I don't know the technical response to what does it mean but i feel like uh i think ethereum is a fungible token and has inherent value because of what it is whereas this a non-fungible has no value until you give it value i think when it starts to exchange hands so don't quote me on that we can look that up <laughs> yeah. I, i'm curious to hear what jo i mean i i feel like I think for, joseph probably has a better yeah, idea he does. no but, no but but i want to i want to bring something up before you do mm -hmm. though and I say that because it kind of reminds me, I mean, well, first of all, the ownership aspect of the NFT is an area of the conversation that I thought was important only because, for example, we know what happened with Banksy, right? Banksy had sold a, a piece and then when it got resold for several million dollars, he never makes commissions on future sales, right? I remember there was an issue surrounding that. Right. So NFTs comes into, from what I understand, as far as empowering the creatives, it allows you to make potentially based on the contract and, and what platforms and things like that, that that proof of ownership then lends to future commissions as well for an yes. artist, correct? I mean, I'm already getting paid on the secondary. There you go. Mm, so Joseph, awesome. what, did, what did you have to add to kind of his? Oh, yeah. I mean, I will say I'm, I'm, I am somewhat learning uh, as this is all new myself. So to be, I can't eloquently speak on what a non-fungible token is outside of the thing is, you know, is, is kind of what Ali said. It is something that is certified and minted. Yes, you can still get this copy um, here and there amongst the internet, but you won't have that digital signature that's tied to the blockchain. That's the real authentic. And obviously like he's, you know, there are some that you, you know, that's, what's cool. You can, you can make one of one, you can make 10 of 10, you can do 30, you know, you can limit the number that are, uh, you know, that have that extra stamp into it. And um, as you touched on, as I understand it, um, you can into your smart contract as it goes to different hands in the value, you know, people buy and trade and sell it because that's what's cool now is all these people are into it. And so they're buying and selling and trading. So every time that happens, there is a percentage that if you if that's the way you as I understand, you know, the way you've set it up, it does kick the, you know, a royalty back to the artist, which, you know, in the in the art world, you yeah, you didn't normally get that if you did a painting and and you resold it to uh, you resold it to a, a third party you um you were a you know you, you you didn't see that extra royalty um which is really cool and and it's just uh that's one thing that's that's nice about it and it does just allow the artist to have a bit more control of their work um and what they're doing with it um yeah um 
Oh, by the way, Sabat, I know our engineer, we so love doing these interviews via Zoom because we can at least get everyone together. But I do know, I don't know if you saw the message, she asked you to pull your mic a little bit closer. Uh, I just wanted to point you that out. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, so a couple stats about NFTs. Uh, big names are getting into it. Mark Cuban, NBA, Gary Vaynerchuk, and brands, even Taco Bell have started offering NFTs of their own by creating digital collectibles for sale. In February of 2021, one alone monthly sales on the platform OpenSea were over 95 million dollars so there are a lot of people that have this resistance to cryptocurrency and i mean with regards to what you experienced you had you you had this changes you started i mean what was the process for you to say okay i'm gonna be an nft artist like what was that first step so the first step was i think it was around february 1st 2nd uh, I got a couple of calls. Hey, do you know what an NFT is? And I'm like, mm, no, uh, I'm going to look it up. And that was part of a, my friend had just let me into one of his, his uh, cryptocurrency groups so I can talk to them and understand more because I was going to start investing a little bit in Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I had some experience from years ago when I had bought Ethereum at like $30 and I had 80 coins and I sold them later and did, did okay. for. So my experience wasn't that bad with cryptocurrencies early on just always a little bit of fomo of like oh no you know i sold too early or whatever <laughs> and my friends like get into these nfts and so any google search i would do i swear i would come up on the same two articles and those two articles had like a list of these websites that i could join and uh so i signed up for known origin and then i signed and that was it i just and I tried to sign up for Super Rare and the other ones, but it didn't. It seemed too hard to do, so I just signed up for Known Origin. And it took them about a week and a half to two weeks to reply back to me that I had been accepted in the website. It's a curated website, and uh, when I went to see if I had been accepted, I noticed that I could upload. And of course, if you give me the opportunity to share, I'm going to share. And uh, I put my first one up. Now. A lot of people look at the the success I've had in, in the NFT world and feel like, how did he do it so fast? And <laughs> where did he come from? What they don't see is that for the past six years or 25 years, I've been doing branding strategy. For the past six years, I've been figuring out how to sell artwork online, which is what we talked about in the last one. You know, doing the auctions and selling on Instagram and selling on Facebook and all those good stuff, and creating gamification models and creating. Uh, flash sales and daily auctions and all of those things. So I was very comfortable in that scene of bringing my piece up and allowing for 10 a day. For example, every day I, I was doing flash uh, the daily auctions and I would allow for 10 pieces to be sold in the same auction. So when I came in for me and they allowed me to come in, I just right away, I'm like, I'm going to make 10 of this one available because I know it sells really well. And uh, I pr priced it at a half Ethereum, which is... I think at the time it was $900. Ethereum was $1,800. But psychologically, it didn't click that it was $900. It was just half Ethereum for me. So I knew that I would have to set it up there. And I set up a few other ones at different denominations, three of three, five of five, and one of one. My one of ones, I placed at 10 Ethereum, which was at the time, again, $18,000. And uh, I just went forward. And the next thing I know, I sold my first one and I was like, hmm, but wait, this feels really strange. I think the entire vibration of that sale was so different than selling a painting, even an expensive painting. I was like, wait, I don't have to do anything for this anymore. This is, this is done. And uh, <laughs> I think I text my dad. I'm like, dad, I, I actually sold one of these. He goes, I don't know what it means, but it's a young man's game. And I'm like, I'm not young anymore. Uh, uh, but the fact was that I didn't even know what was going on. I didn't even know how this was working, uh, but it worked. And I, you know, I didn't see the history that there's, there's been this stuff for about three years or so. Uh, so I ended up selling the first 10 and that's kind of how, uh, how I got kicked off. Let me ask you, because I know that when it comes to the conversation, I really want to make sure it, people understand this, this empowered you, right? Like this, how did this empower you, this opportunity? Well, I mean, from a financial aspect, as soon as you have, there, there was almost no resistance for me. You know, the, I think a lot of the other artists are having their challenges and things like that, that they would in the normal life. 
for me, I walked into this at a higher vibration. I was already ready. So things moved really fast for me. So my story is, and I thought everybody was having this kind of success, by the way. So for like maybe two weeks, I thought, isn't everybody selling like 20 a day? <laughs> you know? um, but I, I think because of my low level of resistance to what is and how I walked in, uh, I had uh, a good time doing it and sharing and, and selling. So how it changed things for me, uh, for once I knew that I never needed to worry about money anymore. For sure. And I was already there to a certain degree on how I felt about life. But financially, it's very freeing. And it opens you up to get creative, do other things, do things that you've been dreaming of. You know, after I sold, uh, you know, a bunch more, and I'll tell you how that happened. Um, if, you, if you're interested to know how kind of that progressed. Uh, I just knew that now I want to do more. Like I haven't, I wasn't sleeping. I was only sleeping about four hours a day and not because I was falling behind on anything, but I was just really excited about doing more. You would think like if I got a branding job and it was like enough to take care of me for a couple of months, I would take a break probably about five or six days because I was exhausted from the interactions that I'm having to close a branding deal, to sign a contract, to, you know, and then I have to sit there and do the work. You get what I'm saying? There's right. a lot to do there when you're doing a branding project. When you're doing a painting, you get the deposit, then you have to actually go physically do the painting. And then there's that, you know, resistance there. There's a lot of resistance in all these things, right? So there is an exhaustion period, then there's a recovery period, then there's actually doing the work and then pitching it. And with this, it was like this work I've done for six years. I have a huge library of content. All of a sudden, they're worth something way beyond what I've ever been paid for them. Uh, so... Well, and yeah, it should be I said, I mean, you have amazing art out there that I know does go for tens of thousands of dollars. You are an yes. esteemed, you've done incredible projects. And, it, you know, we, we obviously, for people watching, have your lower corners at the bottom. But, um, but you know, the your, your work is amazing, which is a funny story because Joseph, my husband, didn't realize how well I knew. I was like, wait, no, not only has <laughs> not only has our logo and you, you are an exceptional individual. You're very humble and you are very giving. And for those, you know, Unsugar Coded Media is a 501c3 and you from the moment we can. Well, I was a fan and then or, you know, an admirer. And then you, uh, you know, you you designed our logo and you you supported us with EmpowerCon and you've just always been so, and, and the conversations are very welcoming and interesting because the way that you talk about art, you, and I'm just, I have to be a little bit specific. Like I remember you talking to me about colors and rounding the corners and making someone feel invited by whatever that it's, it so much goes into it that I deeply admire your skill and capability. So it's not a surprise to me that it's, you know, going so well for you and people should really check out your work. So anyways, yeah, Joseph, you know, Clubhouse, of course, Clubhouse yeah. has been the new thing. Joseph's on the film circuits and then he got into the NFTs working with some artists and he's, and I'm, and I, and I'm like, oh, if, if you hear Subed, which of course I call you Subed because I just yeah. love your name. The, and, and he's like, and he goes, oh yeah, yeah there's a guy on here, Subed. And I'm like, that's my boy. I was like, that's my boy. And he's like, wait, what? You know him? And I'm like, yeah, me... it was it was quite funny because yeah, it was like, like I told you in the email, I was going into the NFT rooms because it was nice. It was like you you know, a lot of times in the film room, I'm 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 up on a panel or whatever. So it was good good to go in somewhere and learn and just listen and and like I saw you and then I went to your Instagram and I like started like, you know, following you and clicking likes and this and that. And then and then, yeah, I just never and I, I started talking about you one day. Well, and, no, you just and, were in an NFT room and I was like, oh, if you hear Ali, if you hear oh, Sabet, that, that's, that's right. My yeah, boy. yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh, you know him. And like I was like, oh, he was oh. like, his, yeah, I was like, yeah, his stuff is so dope. And so <laughs> it's just like. It's oh, like unique awesome. and original and it was just, yeah, it was just fun, you know, and I hadn't even thought about it and on, on Instagram or whatever, you know, just kind of following stuff and liking it. And, uh, yeah, it was a good small, you know, it was that connection and like how it all just kind of came together was really cool. I love that. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, that's, that's where things have been happening. It's been on clubhouse mm -hmm. and, uh, on on Twitter, two things that I'd never used before. I mean, the first time I saw Clubhouse, I'm like, really? I'm going to be in a perpetual conference call? <laughs> right, gonna, gonna right. Like, I left the corporate world, so I don't have to hear this stuff, you know? And now people are talking about how to be successful and how to do this and how to do that. But 
the NFT world somehow blew up because of um, because of Clubhouse. And I came in, and at first, like the first day, I was asking the same questions as everybody else in a couple of the rooms. And how do you do this? And should I do this? And should I not? The second day, I'm like, I just made my first sale. And the third day was, I just made my 20th sale. And they're like, all right, dude. And, it's like, and they were encouraging. Everybody was exciting. And then, you know, three days later, I'm like, I just sold 100 pieces. And people are like, so I just kind of created this weird story about what I was doing. I don't even know. But at some point, and of course, the first thing I do is try to like, onboard everybody and calling my friends like I'm on crack. I'm like, you guys need to do NFT. Right. And uh, anybody who was on, you know, Clubhouse, I think I held a room one time about two, about a week and a half ago where I was up from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. or 10 or 11 p.m. till 9 a.m. answering questions and having like intimate conversations with artists for 12 hours. No, and that, I do stuff like that. Yeah, no, no, no. That's amazing, and that's what's cool about Clubhouse. You know, even like, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I. We're, we're going to start requesting a fee for the way that I talk about Clubhouse <laughs> on this damn podcast. Which, which, yeah. which, 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 and I, and I do want to lead this into a question because, uh, for both of you, and and without going to everything that an NFT can be, it's I've I've heard a few things. First of all, an NFT can be anything, and to really sure. break the box, like tear down the box on your thinking about nfts and what they can be so and i know that even within the film world there's some there's a reason why i know i had wanted you like how that ex expands into it but just kind of thinking about creatives and the creative world and how it operates can this technology break open the old boys club you know of the art world and entertainment world of course i mean from the from day one i've been hit up by different people some of the people you ex you you talked about right away i had phone calls with some of their team members and partners um on day one day two i mean week one week two um i mean i talked to gary v's partner i talked to uh, uh mark cuban's partner they're amazing dudes they're doing stuff in the space already but now we're talking about collaborating rather than being represented you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like this little artist in a home in Irvine, you know, it's like now I'm getting to possibly collaborate with somebody as incredible as the Mark Cuban team. Not, you know, that's the discussion right now because they own at NFT and on Instagram and they're great people. Uh, same with Gary V's people. I don't know if I'm going to do anything with them, but I've talked to like uh, one of the team members on possibly doing something. But the conversation of being represented uh, at first it was exciting because a few other people reached out and I might have almost signed a contract with someone to be represented. And then I woke up to like 10 X the sales the next day. And I'm like, wait, like, like don't you don't need, need anybody. <laughs> right. Don't, you don't, need don't to give it away. Yeah. Don't give it anything. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you yeah. speak to that part as far as the, the ability or the benefit, I guess. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, well, that's the way I see it is, is, is you are more direct to your fan base. It's taking out a lot of middlemen that are just taking off fees. And look, look, sometimes obviously those people, depending on what level you level you're at, can be very helpful and influential to get you to that next level. But at the same time, you know, it, you've just got to be very strategic with that. And it just cuts out a lot. You know, it does allow you to grow much faster. I, I would, you know, you think. And But, you know, one thing I think that uh, Ali touched on earlier is that, look, he was preparing, you know, for people that think they can just jump into the NFT space and all of a sudden be successful. Like he was preparing for this for years throughout his career in different, you know, formats and different ways. So, you know, that helped lead to his success. So I think, you know, that's one thing for people to, to understand is like, you know, you can't just, but there is so much you can do to help build yourself and build your brand and, and, and own it a lot more and not have to give it up or do this or do that and really engage more, I think, with your audience um, on, on which is in your fan base, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, contemporary artists can use the new contractual terms behind NFTs and the power of social media to more directly reach buyers and build a reputation, correct? Right. So now I'm talking to my collectors directly. Uh, they have an input on some of the stuff that I put up. They're grateful that they're able to purchase a piece, which is 
insane to me, right? They're actually mm-hmm. thanking me after, thank you for letting me purchase this piece. <laughs> and they genuinely mean it. And I genuinely am excited that they're going to own it. Um, so there's a lot that goes in. You know, I have I had one piece that I was working on, putting a layer of music on it. And the collector was excited that he chose one of the songs on my record label that I have. Uh, I started a record label. So he picked one of the songs out of there. He goes, can you use this one? And he was excited that he was a part of it and that I was open to listening to him. And now we're friends. So, but again, that's not new to me because I've been friends with all my clients and my, uh, my collectors. This is just on a whole nother level of gratitude, uh, which I don't understand sometimes because I'm like, I'm not even giving you a physical piece. And, you know, I'm so used to like, I was offering physical pieces the first week or two. And I'm like, then I, started to kind of embrace the fact that it wasn't needed um it was it was enough that they were getting the piece that that's on on the blockchain how so yeah, there's there's a lot of good stuff happening so i mean you talked a little bit about the creative collaboration that's going on but how might it enable creative co- collaboration not only between artists but also between artists and a new breed of algorithmic bots behind a brand new genre known as gen- generative art are you familiar with this? Yeah, I mean, some guys are doing a lot of the the crypto punks and all this stuff that are generic that are computer generated. Uh, I did start a collectible, but the only bot that's generating them is me. I'm painting them one at a time. Uh, I think that's going to be great, but it 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 will probably fluctuate as far as how hot it gets and goes down depending on the the project and the IP. Some of the old school stuff like crypto kitties and uh, cyberpunks, I think that's what they are. They're the original pieces that were out there. They're doing great. But, you know, I think that using any kind of platform to create, it's okay. You know, when I was designing or painting on an iPad at first, I had resistance to it. I was like, no, this is this doesn't make me a real painter. But now my iPad paintings are going for twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars at a you know, on, on one piece. Mm-hmm. So I think you just gotta look at your each one of these things as a medium now as far as a collaboration with other human beings unknown origin i've done two animated collaborations where i connected with a commercial animator this guy is amazing his name is yossi and uh he's done two of my pieces uh quarantine magic and galaxy sailor in motion and we did really well and known origin actually allows for two partners to come in and uh put in their mask you know metamask wallets or uh, it does. Uh, their memberships mm-hmm. and it splits the profits automatically every time we have a sale sans cost and then goes further after that where uh, when we do have secondary sales we'll both automatically be paid so there'll never be any kind of butting heads over money uh, or over any issues where you know hey i didn't get paid enough on this one or you forgot to pay me for the royalties after the resale that's not going to happen uh, because of these different platforms that are making more and more collaborations easy and available. And because of the fact that, you know, there is instant contracts happening uh, and they're on the blockchain, so safe and secure, neither one of us has ever had to hire a lawyer. <laughs> so sorry. Hence where Joseph has been coming in. <laughs> sorry, <and so> we... <laughs> oh, no. Don't need you <laughs> no, it's all good. Joseph, well, Joseph's going to be writing smart contracts, which that's, well, that's what you're that... going to come in. You're going to come in where you're going to do custom contracts, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's what it, you know, like, because they're that's one thing i've i've you know learned throughout this is like yeah the, uh, some of the platforms don't allow that royalty split and right. and and more there's a few more that I, I think i forget the name of them off the top of my head but that that do which is cool but you know another interesting thing that i that i found out that it'll be it'll be and maybe you have more input on this is that once you post it on one um, plat, you know, on on like OpenSea, for instance, if the right. buyer takes it to another platform to resell it, that that smart contract doesn't follow um, to that other platform. It so, doesn't. so no. yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how they wind up. I mean, I'm sure in due time somebody will figure that out and how to for them to talk. Have to all work together at yeah. some point to to bring it all together. But for now, it's not. But at the same time, the secondary market seems to stay very uh within specific mm-hmm. so like you can't bring another piece to known origin i don't think you can bring another piece to uh rare uh, you can the only two big ones oh, i see what more, you're saying I, they won't let you they, they won't, won't even let, let you bounce it over no, to their I asked, platform i asked known origin i said hey my buddy has one of my pieces wants to come and sell it here can he 
They're like, no, we don't do that. So for now, it's very, you know, they're kind of stuck there. Mm. But you own your non-tangible, you know, you can take it to OpenSea for sure. You can grab it from, uh, you don't even need to grab it from Known Origin and take it to OpenSea. It's already uh, aggregating it. Mm. And you can automatically go press it, press the sell button on OpenSea and try to sell it there. And it'll move it. But uh, you you can take it from somewhere else or I can, I can go on a website and actually mint. There's a website. I forget what it's called, but I can mint it and just keep it in my own wallet. Right. I don't have to be on any platform. Mm. So I, then I can go on known origin and sell it there or rareable and sell it there if I wanted to, but I, it has my name on the contract. So it doesn't have like, let's say open C in the, in the smart contract. Right. It yeah, belongs yeah. to solve it. It's my custom, but you pay for that. You pay a pretty, pretty penny for those. Oh, really? Um, and for those more advanced smart contracts. Yeah, I, I have, uh, I'll find the site for you. I think it's nifty kit. Mm -hmm. The great dudes over there too. They've invited me. They, they did one for me for free. Uh, but it does cost, I think, to have your own brand of uh, minting. Yeah. Interesting. So I have a question with regards to actually the social good. You know, how can or can, uh, you know, I, of course, my brain starts thinking unsugarcoated media. How can we, you know, is that something where we can collaborate with someone on FT auctions and proceeds be given to yeah. charity or anything like is that something that is possible? So you can collaborate with us. Uh, you can collaborate with the Sabbath Collective and the ranch community. So there's something called the ranch community that started as a real joke in clubhouse. It was really fun. One night we were having a blast and the word ranch started coming in and we just started using ranch as a verb, as a noun, as it just became a silly thing. Now we have ranch rooms where people hang out and talk about ranch and NFTs and it started to become kind of a movement. And a couple of days ago, we were able to help close out a, a, GoFundMe, a GoFundMe for this little girl who's dealing with brain cancer. I was able to do the first donation by selling a piece at, with the ranch now, uh, backing it, the ranch fund. And uh, I sold uh, I sold a piece and I was able to get 20% of it, which ended up being 1700 bucks. And uh, That's amazing. that continued to last night. We had a huge ranch uh, party to raise the rest of it. And we broke $50,000 for her and she is incredible. And hopefully it'll, it'll help her. And so with you guys and I'm sure Coda media and Saba collective and ranch, and there's other people we can, we can bring you guys on board to raise funds for any cause. So the ranch, uh, community, I think that's where it's leading to, mm -hmm. uh, we might actually, who knows, but we might get some official, I can't say much right, right now. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Now I know what I want you to. Some official love uh, <laughs> yeah. from, uh, from, you know, That's the awesome. real ranch people. <laughs> we won't say the brand name, but I think we have some some ears open right now about that as well. So That's awesome. Yeah, so you, we, those are kind of the two initiatives that have happened. Uh, the Saba Collective is a small group of us that are got together and the Ranch Collective, and that's all happening on OpenSea. But we're last night, if you go... We were retweeting each other. It's very instant, uh, Ali. I want you to know that things that happen when I talk in a clubhouse room, my work starts selling immediately as I'm talking and answering a question because people are checking out who I am. They're looking, you know, my background and they're like, Ooh, I want to buy this piece and they just grab it. Yeah. So there's this instant thing, the speed of, I always say we've probably stepped in the fifth dimension or something because the speed of what happens. One day I'm sitting next to Paris Hilton. The next day I'm talking to MC Hammer. He's yeah. become a collector uh, or, a, or a supporter of my work. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, the things that are happening, uh, I'm talking to my dream, like I want to like Kid Robot, which is, I don't know if you guys know what oh, that yeah, is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, do you know, Frank Kozik, you know who that yeah. is? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Frank Kozik, I mean, these are guys I looked up to like 20 years ago when I started Pixel Pop. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, you know, in tears sometimes one day they'll look at me, you know, they'll talk to me. Mm -hmm. Three nights ago, I was helping Frank like onboard, you know, open <laughs> seat. I was giving him points. I'm laying in bed. I'm like, look, Frank, this is what you do. And he's like, all right, dude, thank you so much. If you want. And then he's like, do you want Stitch Bunny and Target? I'm like, yeah, dude, that'd be great. He's like, all right, I'll do that next week. Let's figure it out. What, what yep, is yep. happening? I, like, I feel you, my friend. Look, I, I, what is happening? a thousand percent, uh, uh, a couple things like 
one. Yeah, I mean, that's the way that Clubhouse works and the way that people just kind of go in, check you out. And I was just talking about Unsugarcoated Media. Somebody heard it, said, well, I just donated $100 to Unsugarcoated Media, which isn't, you know, but it's the thought, the gesture, I don't care. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting it, but the way, and yeah, I remember sitting in one night with the, Sheila E was in the room talking to us. And, and I mean, and of course, like we're, I mean, you're around celebrities. We've been yeah. around celebrities before, but it's right. interesting to actually be in this platform and then just be having conversations with them while you're cooking you're dinner. On the same level, now. yeah. I mean, yeah. everybody's on the same level. If you have sold fifty NFTs or if you've sold one NFT, you're sitting next to Paris Hilton, and she's interested in knowing what you you had to do to sell your first one, and she's you know, or MC Hammer being supportive of the tech industry or whatever, and everybody's you know, Blau bought one of my pieces. And then you have the secret dudes that are amazing in the industry, like the whale shark, which basically I think really catapulted me by uh, by me uh, tweeting at him one day. And uh, I don't know if you, I think. Yeah, I know. He, I've seen whale shark. Does, right? mm -hmm. yeah, so whale yeah. shark basically saw me tweet at him saying, hey, can you take a moment to look at my work? And the next thing I know is that uh, he's basically bought everything that i have wow <laughs> and continue to and and he put a tweet out here that said who says that a big collector won't look at your work if you ask them nicely with respect right and right. that day he really changed my life overnight i mean i i woke up to like 80 grand in sales and not even woke up it was the, like 10 minutes after the tweet the power <laughs> of amazing. social digital currency right now is something yeah. that people really need to understand and and i there's a gentleman also named Scrap on on there that I love his mentality and his thought process behind a lot of the stuff that he says. And I so want to get him on the show because the concept of what we're really using social media for is is a big deal to me. Really quick, before we end up wrapping, I have a couple things because David Hockney, this is just you know, for conversation. David Hockney, the painter who currently holds the record for the most expensive work of art sold by a living artist, had this to say about NFTs. <laughs> and I'm paraphrasing. He referred to it as international crooks and swindlers, and he expressed confusion about what they actually are. What is it they're owning? And he kind of comments on like, can't it just get lost in the computer? How will you find it? So everyone's open, everyone's allowed to have their own opinion on things, right? And it doesn't surprise me that perhaps the oldest living painter doesn't fully understand it. But when you hear something like who that, who said that, this is uh, David Hockney. Well, it's interesting that David Hockney would say that because he's one of the first ones that kind of helped me understand that the iPad was, was a medium. Yeah, yeah. Because he's the one that started selling very expensive uh, iPhone doodles, his iPhone doodles that he was sending to his friends and family which I was doing since the iPhone came out, what, 2007, 13 years ago, 14 years ago, he was doing the same thing. And then he ends up having a huge show. So uh, I think he'll come around. Sure. As maybe, maybe his, I, I don't know. But the fact is that anything that he just said can happen in the real world. You know, I mm. have given paintings that people can't find. <laughs> I have had paintings of mine get destroyed because I spilled coffee on them and they fell on the floor and I stepped over them everything that you know you're saying people can hack into your system and yeah jack your cryptocurrency and jack your thing people can break into my house and take all my paintings i mean right or or in a museum right how many museums have been robbed so right, right. Yeah. Uh, and we don't know where those pieces are so yeah the thing is here the difference is that uh, the provenance is clear you can't lie anymore who owns the De david Hock hockney you mm. can't you can't make a fake David Hockney and put it. You can. You can probably take one of my pieces and mint it, but it's there. It's completely visible. We can see who did it, and we can go and ask somebody to take it down. Then you need the attorney. Uh, then you need the attorney for that, yeah, right? You need the attorney. <laughs> you, you, you need know. the system to system. Yeah, but from a, from a perspective of everything he said, I, I didn't hear all of it, uh, but I, I think that everything that that happens in the real world uh, is is here, but it's on the blockchain. So if you go look at like any of the Pixel Pop characters, how many hands they've changed, or who owned it, and where it went, and now it's sitting in some sort of vault. The only thing sometimes you won't know is whose vault it is, but there's some an anomaly. But you can track to see where that num, you know, where that wallet has been, and who, what else they've bought and collected. Yeah. I guess in closing, I want to ask both of you guys, you know, why should people not dismiss cryptocurrency, especially to where it comes when you start operating in the media and entertainment and art space? 
So I want Joseph to go first. Well, I mean, I think what the the main thing that you can't dismiss it is because of the way you can t uh, tack ownership to. There is, you know, you there there is no confusion on who owns what, and even, and that's the same way with even your cryptocurrency and the visibility that you and transparency that you see where so many times so many of these transactions are hidden or there's this and that and there's fees and everybody's kind of grabbing this and you know and and that's the biggest thing about it to me is the transparency and the the way that you know it also allows a class of people i think in my mind to come up where it's you know it is the it, it is much more freedom because when the banking system and this and that it's a good old boys club and so it gives them the average person a chance to 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 come into something and and take ownership and keep control of that and experience something that they really can't outside in the physical you know, you know in the world a yeah, lot of times it's a disruptor in that sense i think to a lot of people's minds and, and the way that the banking and monetizations typically have it's very decentralized right ali and so yeah i mean in your in your mind why should people not dismiss cryptocurrency I mean, obviously, you know, I, I have very little knowledge of how it works and functions, but uh, cryptocurrency itself is different, I guess, than the NFT because the NFT lives on with the blockchain and all that stuff. But look what it's done. I mean, it's allowed us without any central banking system, without any kind of galleries, without any kind of thing, we're exchanging and changing lives, you know, so I think it's going to be here for a lifetime. The only thing I don't understand is when I look back at the thousands of paintings that I've done and I've had the struggle of selling them for a hundred bucks to 10,000 bucks or whatever that number is. And now here it's like this exchange of cryptocurrency seems almost like money isn't a, a big deal, right? It's like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm selling pieces for a lot of money and it's like, oh, that's just three ETH. You know, yeah, yeah, that. right. I know. I, I just know. Sold, really I just had this, you know, three sales of like three ETH, and it's like, oh, it's like six thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah six thousand dollar pop. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it just changes your world. I love it. I love it. It changes your world. That's a good reason to not dismiss it. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I will. True confession. When Bitcoin Joseph got into it, and I was nervous. I'm the ner I'm. I. I actually lost. <laughs> I've lost several hundreds of thousands of dollars in stocks back in, you know, 2000s, early 2000s, sure. right? And so I'm always apprehensive. That doesn't mean that I don't invest. It's just I'm more of a conservative investor. Right. And he got into it and my head was, and I was like, uh, you know, and then he mm -hmm. sold it. And of course now he's one of those people with those regret, like, ah, eh, should I have gotten out? It's because, a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but the thing is, if you think about it, an NFT or, or all of this, like now I'm looking going, okay, so I have some ETH. Well, can I put a down payment on a house with some ETH? Can I show that I have capability of earning more and, you know, being qualified for a loan for a home? Look at the way it's changing the way I'm thinking. So I have my loan guy right now looking into the fact that does my cryptocurrency, uh, you know, it, will a bank approve me because I have cryptocurrency a little bit or not? Mm. What Can I, you know, maybe I can't put it as a down payment, but can I use it as a proof that I can, you know, I'm worthy to let no, me just as collateral. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So things like that is happening where again, uh, another life to change situation is happening here. So those are the things that I feel like, uh, you know, you shouldn't dismiss it. And, and again, I think NFTs are a proof of concept. I have, as soon as I think another mm -hmm. layer on top of this technology comes where people, which already is happening on, I think maker's place and a couple other places. Where people can buy with a credit card and not even see the layer of cryptocurrency is happening behind the scenes a lot more people are going to start collecting nfts and selling it and having a good time uh, mm -hmm. doing so uh my only negative thing that's been happening is some collectors have asked me to slow down because the scarcity model and that kind of upset me a little bit because i do believe in it and in, in being scarce but it, but then part of me says as a human being i'm scarce you know i'm you know, every single one of us has a limited life. You know, right. I wouldn't be pissed if Picasso had another 10,000 pieces out right. in the world. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, Tupac was releasing things after he passed away because he constantly believed in, in feeding that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, and we, we still love every song. We still yep. love every painting. Yeah. So, yep. you know, so to those people, 
I'm gonna keep minting. <laughs> <laughs> as you should. Good Listen job. As, as you, should. you should. Hey, really quick, you know, uh, Joseph. First, we finally got you on Instagram. Thanks to Clubhouse. So, if you want it for the listening <laughs> audience, really quick, tell them your handle. Um, I, oh my God, I think it's my name, right? Joseph Lanius. Just okay, look there. She knows. Joseph yeah. Lanius, yeah. L-A-N-I-U-S <laughs> audience. And Ali, what is your handle on social media and how can people get in touch with you? It's at Sabet everywhere and now at Pixel Pop as well. Yes, and that's S-A-B-E-T, one of my favorite. I swear, if we would have had another kid, I might have actually picked that as a name. <laughs> I, I know I say it much more like Sabet, you know, um, yeah. but I, I, I love you and I appreciate you. Thank, Thank you for you. coming and having this conversation with us. I am, uh, you know, e forever eternally in your debt for all the wonderful things. And I look forward to I collaborating. Have. We'll have to get together. Absolutely. Uh, I, I want to put it out there, Joseph, if you think of some stuff. Uh, with Pixel Pop, I don't know if you've seen the Pixel Pop, oh, book, yeah, but it's yeah. actually like really taking off uh, as a collectible. And uh, so I feel like it's time to talk about maybe an animation and things like that. Yeah, maybe soon. So yeah, that'd be really cool. That yeah, no, there's there's a lot of stuff I want. I'd, I'd like to definitely connect with you on and talk okay. about. You know, mm -hmm. even stuff that you know what I'm. I'm looking to do with you know like some f stuff with film and, and short media and stuff sure. that, uh, yeah. Yeah, that. Let, let's yeah. let's collab for sure man i appreciate all right. it all right, all right you guys cheers. thank you so much to my husband thank you so much to ali to the thank audience you. at home we love you we appreciate you be sure to come back again for the next episode and don't forget to also check out episode 23 to learn a whole lot more about ali and his story and we'll see you next time thank you so much for letting us be unsugarcoated week.